Ooh, Diet Coke or Classic Coke? Oh, zero sugar. Big decision there. There you go. Coke Classic. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's so smart. So smart. This is incredible. There you go. Right. So now I need to go to checkout. Hi, builders. What if I told you there's an AI agent that you can use for free that can handle tasks for you directly in your browser? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set this web browser agent step by step so that you can start using it today. And to be honest, we're in a very unique time for AI with new tools like these coming along, especially these ones. I feel like are pushing us into the agent as a service era that I mentioned in one of my earlier videos. So stick around because I'm going to get started straight away. All right, so if you're not aware, OpenAI released their own web browser agent called Operator. And essentially what it can do is, well, you give it a query and essentially it can, uh, you know, through, through a browser, it can click stuff for you and type in stuff for you. So, you know, if you can type and click stuff, then you can pretty much do a lot, uh, most, most things online, right? Um, and that's, that's what it's doing, so, so it's amazing. This is the accuracy of uh, OpenAI's operator. Mind you, it's a really big company and there's a lot of research going on in trying to improve their products. This is computer use by Anthropic, so it's not doing amazing. And then the one that we're gonna use today is this one called browser use. And mind you, this is an open source project and it has kind of outshined uh, operator in this scenario. It might be by a few percent, but still it's it's a big statement knowing that this is open source. And with this, you can, you can sort of get an intuition on where we are headed towards with the open source world. Not only in the product space, right? Because this is a product, but also in the model space. So you saw DeepSeek R1 and all the allegations that they made, right? All the statements that they made. And look at how uh, the stock market dropped. Uh, it's also other things as well, but I'll probably make a video about it. So, you know, uh, so you understand fully what happened that day. But but yeah, essentially, um, yeah, pretty good accuracy. The, the thing with OpenAI Operator is that it costs $200 a month. So even if they drop it to 100, like I'm not even paying for Netflix uh, at $20 a month, right? So for me paying for something that I'm not sure how well it works, you know, I'm definitely not paying $200 a month. <laughs> and you know, also it's not available in many countries and it's closed source, so you can't see how it works. And that's why browser use is superior in this scenario because it's free and it's open source. So once again, you can, you can understand, uh, you know, where we're going with open source. And there's two ways of using this tool. So you could either go to their uh, go to their site and use their cloud instance. So everything is hosted by them, everything is handled by them. It's thirty dollars a month right now, so it's not that bad for for what you get. I'm pretty sure you can do something out of it, or you can just test it locally, right? Which is what we are going to do today. Okay, so there's a couple steps, overarching steps that uh, we're going to take to accomplish this, right? To have it all set up uh, so that it's ready to use. So having said that. Let's get straight to it. So what we're going to do is head over to uh, your code editor. Okay, if you don't have one, then go ahead and download Cursor. I, I really recommend Cursor, it's really good. It's an AI powered code editor. If you just wanna use plain code, go ahead and use uh, VS Code. But whatever you use, you're gonna open a new project, right? I already created this one from before. So yeah, go ahead and open a new project. And now we are going to, what was this? We're going to clone the repository. So this is this one here, right? We're going to the GitHub website and then we're heading to here and you're going to copy this URL. Then you're gonna come back here, open the terminal. If you don't know how to open the terminal, there should be a plus sign and either that or you can do command J to toggle on and off the terminal. But once you're here, you're gonna do the git clone and then copy the, uh, paste in the URL. So right now we're cloning, we're doing all that stuff and it should be ready. So now you should be able to see here that you have all these files. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So now we are going to CD onto web UI. So CD means change directory. So we're changing the directory to this one here, right? This folder is a directory. So CD web UI, and now we need to install the requirements. So if you're following, if you're using a, a GitHub repository, I recommend that you watch the install options. So in this case, we're gonna do local installation. We're installing locally, and it's recommending me to use UV. So this is a Python environment, and Conda is another one, another famous one that you can use as well. To keep it simple, we're gonna use UV to install uh, the requirements, and then install Playwright. So let's go over here, and let's do pip install UV. Cool, I already, I already uh, installed it, so uh, you might have something different, like a load bar or something, if it's your first time. And once we've done that, now we can do UVM. Recommend using UV to set up. So 
set this up. Cool, we created a virtual environment. And now we're gonna activate it with this command. So everything is there, everything is on the GitHub repo. Cool, we activated that virtual environment. Now we are going to install the requirements.txt right here. Right, so we need to install these things essentially. So that's what we're doing with this terminal command. We're installing all the necessary kind of tools that we need in order to launch this app, if you may, okay? This is all hosted within a, uh, an app in localhost. So, so yeah, this is all that we need to kind of launch that app. And now we are going to install Playwright. Playwright is kind of a tool in the background that the agent needs to do the web browsing abilities. So it's gonna be able to kind of read the HTML of the site and, and whatnot. So we're gonna install that. Cool, that is done. Once you're done with that, now before running the actual thing, we are going to copy the .env.example file, which obviously you can't, you can't use, uh, into a, a new file. So we're gonna create a, a .env file right, right here. So you can copy this. So you can also ask uh, the composer to do it for you. But essentially what we're doing is we're creating a .env file with the same stuff as in this here. And now we are gonna add uh, the OpenAI API key. So, cause I wanna use the OpenAI model. So if we create a new secret key, let's call it test browser use, if you may. Let's create that, copy that, and let's add it right here. Okay, I'm sure you should save that. And don't worry, I'm going to delete this key as, as we're done with the video. <laughs> and now that you've done that, what you can do is just run this. So we're gonna run that. So now we're running uh, the browser use API. And now all we need to do is command and click. So I'm gonna bring that to the browser here and you're going to see, check this out. We're inside the local browser use web UI. And this is guys where the magic starts. Amazing, so now that we're here, we're gonna go through the setup. I'm not looking for anything complicated right now, so it's gonna be a demo, but what I know is that let's move this um, to around, I think 60 should be all right. Let's leave this as 10 max actions per step. I think that makes sense, and we can leave that as it is, cool. Now we're gonna go through uh, the open configuration. So let's use for all, that's good enough. Let's put the temperature at 0 0.1, right? We wanna keep it as less random as possible. And the base, the base URL, so API endpoint URL if required. So I've I've placed it on the .dm, uh, so th this should work, right? If you know from before, on the .dm I already specified the OpenAI OpenAI API key. Sorry. So we're gonna add the the base URL and the API key is there, so we can leave it blank. It can be the case as well that uh, you don't put it on the .dm, right? What I did here is kind of optional, but I added it anyways. But you can do it you can do it like this, so you can you know put the base URL and and then paste the API key directly here. That should work as well. And now we are gonna go to the browser settings so I think we can leave this as it is okay I think I, it all looks good and now we're just gonna gonna go ahead and do that just in case it launches uh, it launches launches something separate that I need to be aware of um, let's run the agent okay and what do we see here as an example so go to google.com and type openai click search and give me the first URL okay so what is something interesting that that we could try um, Okay, so let's do something a bit challenging. So, so if you have a look at the OpenAI video right, where they're explaining how to use uh, their operator and whatnot, they they do a basic search, right? They're they're on Open Table or something, and they, they do a basic search. Um, I want to do something a bit more complicated. Let's see. Let's try to push the limits. Let's see, uh, you know, what browser use is capable of. So let's let's have a look. I'm thinking, go to Uber Eats dot com and get me a get me a get me a Big Mac menu um, from a McDonald's close to where I live. I live in. I'm gonna make uh, make up an address, of course. So it's gonna search a random random addresses random address in London. Okay, <laughs> does a job. Twenty eight Kingsway. That sounds legit. <laughs> Is it? Let me check if it's an actually actual thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so let's do that. So I live in 23 Manchester Road. I uh, apologize if, you know, it's someone's house <laughs> or, or something. I don't think so. I want Coke and normal fries with the menu. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's run it. Let's see. Okay, and the delivery address. Let's let's grab 
um, let's grab this here. If you're, if you're curious on what, what's going on, I'm going to put that here, enter in the address. But it's pretty cool that, you know, you're, <laughs> look at that. You're able to do that from, from a query, you know, usually this, this stuff is hard coded, right? And it's some way or another, it's hard coded, but, but in this case, it's all performed by a language model. There's, there's no part of this code that's, 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 you know, at least in the actions that is hard coded, like, you know, other, other automation platforms or other automation software that, that people code, uh, you know, in. So, so yeah, look at that. I mean, found a McDonald's in Harangi, 10 minutes away. And, <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm shocked, honestly, like this is, this is pretty good. Also, you know, because I just set it up for free. You know, if you were, if you were to perhaps add a database and, you know, uh, set this up in a robust manner, you know, into your own kind of application, um, then this it would be insane. So I got a Big Mac, got a Big Mac. I don't know if it knows uh, if it's a menu or not. So let me, let's see the whole thing. It didn't get a big, oh, oh yeah, okay. So, ooh, it, it, okay, it's going for the medium Big Mac. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. It knows I want fries. So honestly, I'm happy as uh, as long as it's able to order the fries and the and the Coke. <laughs> I'll be pretty impressed. Okay, let's see the whole thing. There you go. I want a Coke. Ooh, Diet Coke or Classic Coke? Oh, zero sugar. Big decision there. There you go. Coke Classic. Never goes wrong. All right, fair play. All right, don't customize the item. I'm a fat guy already. <laughs> Big Mac is available for five five oh nine. Like oh, it's 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 so smart. It's so smart. Like this 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 is incredible. So what is it? So <laughs> okay, it's it's going okay. It's I think it's going. Oh, there you go. Right. So now I need to go to checkout. I thought it ordered it ordered another Big Mac because I, I I saw that it came as a pop up, but it didn't. It didn't go in a loop. Great. That's it. I mean, have a look at that. I mean, I'm not gonna give it, but you know, I'm pretty sure it's able to do that. But I'm gonna stop that because uh, I'm I'm blown away. Okay, guys, I'm I'm blown away. Okay, it's putting user. Okay, let's let's stop it there. Obviously, it's not gonna know. Uh, is it not gonna know my password and my my account? Um, except if you know, um, there's some secret microphones around my laptop and it's connected to the agent somehow. But I don't think that's the case. But but yeah, as you can see, guys, I'm gonna leave the video there. Um, that was insane. That was that was insane. Uh, I have no words for it. Um, so so yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, I'm I'm impressed by the current capabilities of things. I mean, if if you see how this is now. Imagine, I mean, I'm not even gonna say in a few years. I'm not gonna say that anymore. I'm gonna say in a few months. What's gonna happen in a few months? Um, we're, we're gonna see a lot of change, guys, and you, you guys have to be ready for it. I'll leave you guys there. I'm actually hungry now because I saw that. So uh, I'm probably gonna order or something. But, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and yeah, hit that like button if possible. I would appreciate it a lot and it helps the channel a lot. And yeah, if you didn't like the video for some reason, please, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, let me know why. And and yeah, and yeah. If you if you have any suggestions for future videos, um, you know, go for it. Uh, uh, ask me as well. You know, I'm planning to do a little bit uh, of both, right? I want to hit my limits as well with what I'm able to do personally, right? I'm I'm doing no code stuff, which is amazing, and I'm gonna keep doing. But every now and then, I wanna, you know, I want to dabble in, in into the the new trends and and what's going on, such as this, right? This this was amazing. This was beautiful. So, so yeah, I'm going to probably post stuff like this as well in the future, just to let you know. Cool. Okay. I'm getting extra hungry now, so I'll see you in the next one.